Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how you can make this microwave by using one of my kits. Okay, and then I'm also going to show you how you can make this toaster. Let me grab some toast for you and show you how it works. So the toast will go in here. Now you can use the toast that's already with the kit or you can make the kit um, toast out of clay if you have clay. All right, that's how that goes. And we're gonna go ahead and make this. First thing you need to do is follow the link below to get the kit and you can paint them whatever color you wanna paint them. This one's um, silver, like the replicate, like stainless steel, and then there's white, and then there's black, or you can paint them red or green or whatever. Then you want to take the kit out of the package. Now, I'll wipe them down before I send them to you, but you may have to wipe them off again um, very lightly with a damp towel or a baby wipe because they're laser cut and some of the burn marks may go through, and you'll see it on there but for the most part, it should be fine. All right, so you have one here, you have a top and a bottom, then you have the face, and then you have the back face, then you have the back board, and then the two sides, and then all these here are your toaster kit parts, okay? Then over here in the acrylic, you have your, play, um, your turntable, and then your front glass and then this is a piece of toast um, that's made out of the cast acrylic so you'll peel off the layer and you'll do this with all the acrylic and you'll have like a little frame that looks like a piece of toast inside of it I don't know if you can see that very well because it's clear but I made this with the extra piece that was left over in the acrylic that was cut out on here because here you have an acrylic piece of toast which you won't use that I'm sure but um, if you decide to make the clay it'll come in handy because you could fill this in with clay to make your mold and take the acrylic piece and put it on top and pop it through and then you're clay will pop back out. Just thought that would make it easy in case you want to make clay toast as opposed to using the wooden toast. And I ended up framing this toast in as well so that you could do the same thing with this if you wanted to do it that way with the toast and use the wood. I don't know how long the wood would last doing it with clay because it's going to go up and you can't wash it. But, you know, you might be able to get enough pieces out of the wood to do it that way. And there are two pieces um, when it comes to, or I should say two sizes. There's a smaller one and then there's a larger one. The smaller piece of toast fits down inside the toaster so it's not seen except for like the little teeny tiny top. And then you pop it up. The larger toast does not fit completely down. It sits up so that like when you have it sitting on the counter, it looks like your toast is popped. So it basically is what you want to do with your toast. Okay, so I'm going to set all my toast on the side because I don't need it for this. And I'm going to set all my toaster parts on the side. Okay, so you have a pattern on one side and a pattern on the other side. If you're going to paint your toaster, I mean your microwave, like I did for this one, you're going to want to paint it um, after you glue the frame without the front. Because you're, it's going to be really hard to get inside of here to paint 
if you're gluing this front piece on because you can't get in this corner here and you won't be able to get back behind here like I don't know if you can see that but back behind here so before you glue this first front piece on which is this piece here you want to paint that now we're going to set the front piece on the side and then this is the back this is the bottom I mean top and this is the bottom so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and start gluing this together on here you have vents you can choose to put your vents facing upwards or downwards but they never go sideways sideways it won't work out so on this one I did it up but on this one I'm gonna do it down so that you can see the difference I'm also going to be using some Loctite crazy glue for this and this stuff will adhere pretty quickly to unclog it if it clogs up stick a needle down in there all right now you can see where the glue is going up and down on here it's an end grain so it may just absorb in there right away like that did so you might have to go back over it now once you've done that you want to go ahead and line it up with the front being even and the back being even so make sure it's even on the side and then hold it up on its side to make sure it's even there now what I do to make sure I have the edge done is I literally push it there and I hold it just like that that way this is lined up as well and then I push down on this piece here and then that makes it even I'm gonna go ahead and put some more crazy glue along here Loctite changed their design of their bottle and I'll be honest with you it clogs a lot worse it says it's you know less clogging but it clogs up more for me I don't know if I'm just doing something wrong with it but it definitely clogs up more for me Okay, so you should have something that looks like this now this piece here is going to get glued here but make sure this is to the left so it matches the one on the bottom see how it sticks up like that you whoop, it wasn't quite dry yet okay so since it did that um, let me fix this glue Okay, I went ahead and wiped it off to get the excess glue off, and I'm re-gluing this. Only this time I am using more glue, since I was able to unclog it and get more to come out. First time I didn't have very much glue on there, just because it was clogged up and it was being difficult. So hopefully that won't, you know, happen to you. Alright, let that set up for a minute, and dry okay so once that's set up then you want to go ahead and put some glue across here and across here and now it wants a pour out of here so if that happens to you just take an area of the paper that you're not using and just dab it now you're gonna put that on there make sure you got your side properly
and then hold it together until it adheres. If you don't want to hold it, you can use masking tape. So this should only take a second. And I think I put too much time in there, so I'm going to add a little more glue to this side. Okay, so if your glue is clogged up, make sure you unclog it before you get started because this side popped off, then this side popped off, and it's because the glue was clogged. All right. Of course, I laid that in the glue. That's okay because I'm going to paint this. Now I'm going to turn this upside down and I'm going to attach glue here. And you want to try not to get the glue to overflow like I did from where I had too much. But like I said, this bottle is really clogged up. And then I unclogged it too much. like that now at this point you want to paint the inside if you're painting it because again it's going to be very difficult to do that with this once it's painted to get behind this side and everything so paint the entire inside and then if you're going to paint the outside you can do that now as well or you can wait it's up to you Okay, so once you have the inside painted, what you want to do is let it dry, and then if you want to give it a second coat to get rid of streaks or whatever you can. But I will tell you that you won't probably see the streaks if you just give it one coat once it's in the dollhouse and it has the face and everything on because it's going to darken. Um, however, you want to paint this part here for the hinge before you put the next step on. Now, I'm painting my microwave white just because white's very clean looking in a kitchen and it's very hard to replicate stainless steel. Um, there are some paints that you can use if you want to do stainless steel. It's just not that um, great when it comes to it because it doesn't look perfectly like stainless steel. All right, so now you have two of these. Make sure you grab the right one because they look pretty close to being the same. You've got a longer one and you've got a shorter one. You want the longer one. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your glue gun, your hot, um, crazy glue, and you're gonna put some crazy glue right along here. Make sure you use enough, but not too much. Or you can use wood glue if you don't have crazy glue and just wait for the steps in between the dry and just tape it. It's up to you what you do really um, for glue, but this stuff adheres pretty quickly. And it usually sticks pretty well. I usually don't have any issues with it sticking, but because it's clogging up, it, I'm not getting as much on there as I would like. And then I just wipe the excess off if it comes out from around the edge. But I'm painting it so it really doesn't matter about this. If you're not painting it and you're going to be doing this with furniture, you want to be very careful with um, using crazy glue. In fact, I recommend using just the wood glue with a tiny bit of crazy glue on the furniture. Now, that's pretty much set up already that quick. So... The next step for this is to take this piece here, which is the face plate, 
and you want to go ahead and add some crazy glue straight down here. The face plate has numbers at the top. It's very small so you can hardly see it, but you're going to put that on there and you're going to make sure that it goes even with this edge and even with the top edge. So even here and pushing it down even with the top. Now you should have a little tiny piece. That piece is the bottom button. That is going to go on the bottom and you're going to make it even with in line with this. So then you have your bottom button to open. Like you'll push that to open your microwave. It doesn't really work, but you would push it to open your microwave. And then there. Now you need to paint everything. When you paint this, you don't want to hit the numbers because the numbers aren't going to be seen if you paint over them because they're so small. So I dry brushed over it just enough to get my numbers on there and then I wiped it off with a wipe. That way it went in between, but I did it very lightly. So what I mean by dry brushing is, I'll show you real quick. I just put like a tiny, tiny bit of paint on the paintbrush. Like very, very little. See how that's very, very little? Then I just kind of dabbed it off. And then I went in between like that. And then I took the baby wipe that I had. And I just kind of wiped off the numbers. And I'm just using acrylic paint. And you are hearing my grandson in the background. He would be one years old on Monday. And he is almost ready to go down for his afternoon nap. Okay, so just finish painting that. All right, so once you've painted everything, paint the outside frame here, this part, and then the inside. That leaves just the door to do. So, paint your door first, and your glass has a side that's got like a burnt edge, and it has a side that's flat, okay? Now this has to go in here perfectly straight in order for it to fit and there is like the back has to go to the back and the front has to stay at the front so if this is your door then put it in this way if not it's the other way now paint your entire door and then you're gonna do a tiny bit of crazy glue in here just a little bit of crazy glue That way, it holds the plexiglass in there. But, you need to paint the door first. Otherwise, you'll get it all over your glass. And you need to let it dry thoroughly.
and do not paint this part here on the inner frame. Okay, now that you have it painted, you need to sand this edge right here. This needs to be sanded, rounded just a little bit. Like I would say you're going to take and sand it down maybe on an angle like that. So that way that little corner, just that corner gets to come off. And how I do it is I lay sandpaper flat. I use a very fine sandpaper. This one is a 220 grit. And I hold one finger here and one finger here. And I just go back and forth. And you can do single motion passes, like one way like that and lift up. Or you can go back and forth like that. Okay, so that should work. Now that's gonna go inside there. And how you can tell it's gonna work is because when I go to open it, it opens. Now, what I also am gonna recommend that you do is you get like maybe two pieces of paper or one thin piece of cardstock and lay it in there. You know, or use part of an envelope or something that's just a teeny bit thicker. So this is just a piece of mail that I had and I folded it in half. And what you're going to do is you're going to stick that there. And it's not really going to raise it up much, but it's going to leave just a itty bitty tiny gap there. Just, just a tiny bit. Not much. Okay. Now, you want to make sure this is straight and then you're going to take... A stick pen and you're gonna stick it in the drill and when you do that again double check to make sure it's straight you need to hold this up and down do not let it twist now flip it over Keeping it, you know, straight up and down. Don't force your stick pin in there with it being um, not drilled, like without drilling it, because it'll split the wood. Next thing you need to do is take the stick pins and you're going to push them in there just like that once you see that it fits and it goes in there with no problem and you're gonna pull them back out and you're gonna put a tiny bit of crazy glue just a tiny bit and put it back in. And then you want to let it set, but your door should open up just like that. If you want this door to open up further, the only other way you can do it is to sand this stuff out here, but no microwave opens up like that, so that's why I stopped it just like that. 
now you need to put your door pane back in which you should have done this prior to this um, to make it a little bit easier but it's not really difficult doing it that way either keep your paper on there until after you put your crazy glue in there but I wanted to make sure it fit that I didn't get any paint that took away my spacing that I needed Right, so I'm doing just a tiny bit right along the edge so that I don't get crazy glue on my fingers. I'm holding it from the front and the back. And you kinda kinda work quickly cause it will set up very fast with this plexi, well, acrylic. All right, then you wanna pull off Someone is at the, front door. the tape. Okay, so once you have the door on and it opens up, now you're going to take the two circles that you have and we're going to work on putting them inside. So you need to peel off the paper. Don't use any tools or anything to peel that paper off. Just use your fingers because you'll scratch the plexiglass or the, not plexiglass, but the acrylic. Now you have two sizes, and the one, if you feel it, it's got like a ridge in it, and then the other side of it does not. So you want the ridge facing up, and then you have the littler one here. What you're going to do is you're going to put some crazy glue right on the top of the bottom size. Make sure there's nothing on it that's going to stick to it. Make sure the ridge is facing up. Then you're going to just put that right on top and try to center it the best that you can. Once that's centered and on there, then you're going to take and put some crazy glue right on the bottom. Just a little drop. Then you're going to place it directly in the center of your microwave. And then once it's dry, it'll look like it's raised above. And it'll look like a turntable. And then that's it for the microwave. You can finish painting it, um, do whatever colors you want, very dry, um, very lightly dry brush over top of the vents. Now for the toaster, you have all these parts and you have your little toaster template for if you want to make clay. You set the toaster template on the side. You have your base, then you have your two sides, and you have your middle, and then your other two sides. So, they have patterns. You want to flip this one over, and flip this one over. I'm going to flip this one over this way, and then this one over this way. And then this one, we're going to leave here for now. You're going to put some crazy glue right around here. Then you're going to put it right on top to sandwich them two together and you can use wood glue for this as well 
because the crazy glue may stick to your fingers if you're anything like me and are messy with it. Okay, so that gets sandwiched together like that. Do the same thing to this side. All right, now the next step is, is you are going to take this piece here and you're gonna put crazy glue on the bottom and the one side. You're gonna line that up just so it matches. Now, you wanna let it dry. At this point, if you want to paint anything, you need to start painting it. Now when you're painting, don't forget to paint this section here if you wanna paint it. If you don't wanna paint it, then don't. And um, you probably should have painted the inside section since you did that, which I'll have to go back with a paintbrush and get that because I forgot to do it. But um, these are just paint markers, acrylic paint markers. They're really nice. They go on very well for this kind of stuff because it's small and it doesn't really show the streaks too much. However, the silver doesn't work out so well with streaks because it shows it, I guess, because it's more of a metallic. So you see like the little lines very easily. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to do the silver. Now, be sure to paint the one side of this before you do anything else um, with gluing it together. Now, you can paint the other side once it's glued together, but for now, you have to make sure you paint this one particular side because what happens is, is when we put it together, you won't be able to get that paintbrush around that centerpiece. Everything else can get painted on that after the fact. Then when you turn this over, make sure you paint the same side. So I just have everything facing to the left so I can just paint the left side. But this will be the toaster when we get done. So let that dry. Okay, so once that's done, then what you need to do is you need to lay this in here. After you've painted it, of course. Now don't forget the bottom. Just like that. And then you want to put some crazy glue right along the entire thing like that. Make sure it's good and covered. And then so that it doesn't bleed over onto that piece, you're going to take it and dip it on to whatever surface that you have that is paper or whatever that you're using. That's throw away and won't matter if it gets crazy glue on it then you're going to line it up completely make sure your thing moves around flip it upside down so that it is to dry After you've done that and it's thoroughly dry, you want to sand this flat. So to do that, you again would just turn it upside down and then you would just go back and forth on the sandpaper to make sure that's nice and flat. Once it's flat, then you can paint it whatever color you want on that back side. Because remember, you lined up everything the best you could in the front. So you can sand that as well if you want, but it's going to be very hard to paint. So do that to the top and then do that to the bottom. Just by going back and forth or single motion direction. Wipe it off. 
let it dry and then of course repaint any areas that needs to be painted like on the edges or whatever and then paint that that way you don't see the difference in lines but that is it then your toaster would look just like this and then your toast will pop up and down in it oh and you want to sand your toast as well so take your toast and just sand it slightly because this is the same exact thickness as the board That way it goes in and out. I mean, it'll still go in if you don't sand it. It just won't move as easily. Plus, if you sand it, you get more of a um, toast-looking color, in my opinion. But you can also paint it. See how that back one is sanded a little bit more so it goes up and down? Now, let me show you a trick that I do as well. Okay, so I put my toast in between a pair of pliers, not your fingers, and then I put my knife and I just go down just a little bit and once you get through that first, it just automatically splits it very carefully then you don't have to sand it but you have to be extremely careful I mean you can sand it but you have to be extremely careful when doing it but this gives you thinner toast and then you have no problem at all with it going up and down and if you don't sand it then where you cut it it's got a little bit of a texture which is kind of cool because toast has texture to it so if you do that make sure that you are using pliers and I'll show you one more time just so you're safe when you're doing it holding it in there keep your fingers far away from the blade and do it slowly And that one I did a little bit thinner and then you do it again and then that time I got three pieces of toast out of there and I can probably get one more maybe I don't know we'll see it might be too thin and there you go so I got four thin pieces of toast. They're not exact in size for thickness, but four pieces out of that one. Did you see any of that or was my hand covering it all? Let me show you again because I think my hand might have been covering it. There you go, you have two pieces of toast. Now, in case you missed it when my hand was over it, I didn't realize it. You can start out thin. And go down. That one didn't work. Because you're going with the grain it slices really easy now if you're going against the grain it's not going to slice but either way you have your toast your microwave and then you have your toast template if you want to make some with clay and that'll all be in a kit that you can get on my website and um, I'll leave the links below as well And basically um, with this little template you would just press your clay in there and then use 
Well, I done dropped it. Okay, so you would put your clay in there and then press that down. Just like that. All right, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you like this and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a question, suggestion, or comment below, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.